For 10, they're going to give you a, uh, a polynomial and they're going to give you the zero. So what they want you to do is use synthetic division and factoring to find the other zeros. Now you don't have to do any guess and check here on this. That zero they're going to give you. So I know that if I use synthetic division and, put, and use a negative two, I should get a remainder of zero. So let's do that. First of all, when you set this up with synthetic, you're going to put the, the zero in there just like it is. We're not going to change the sign on it. You're just going to use exactly the same number right there. You're going to put all the coefficients of this, so as always, make sure you have descending powers and make sure you don't have any powers missing. If you have a power missing, you've got to put a zero placekeeper. We don't have to do this in this case because we have all the numbers accounted for. 6, negative 5, negative 29, and 10. Now let's do the synthetic division. We're going to drop the first number down always. We get 6. You multiply by the number inside the box and you put your answer underneath the next uh, number. Two times negative, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. We're always adding whenever we do synthetic division. We're going to add that together you get negative 17. Now you're going to multiply negative 17 times negative, 30, uh, negative 2 and you get ne uh, positive 34. So negative negative is you get positive 34. We're going to uh, combine it together. We're going to do negative 29 plus 34 means that I get a positive 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10. I'll get a remainder of 0 when I add those together. We can change this now into a quadratic. Every time you do synthetic, it takes the power down by 1. So if they give you a cube, they'll give you 1, 0. But if you have a fourth power, then you'd be given two zeros and you do synthetic twice. But this one we only have to do synthetic once. So it was a cube. That now becomes a square. 6x squared minus 17x and then plus 5. We're going to set this equal to 0. And now we're going to factor whatever one comes up. You should be able to factor your, uh, your answer here. So if I factor it, I get 2x I can use 2x and 3x. I can use a 1 and a 5 are the only factors of 5. And then I want to get a 17 in the middle. Okay, so if I do 2 times 5, that's 10. And 3 is 13. That's the wrong combination. So I'm going to switch the order here and try that. Okay, I'll get 2x and 15x, that will give me a 17. If I make these both negative, then it'll add up to negative 17, but negative 5 and negative 1 gives you a 5. The last thing you're going to do is set both of these individually equal to 0, and your two answers will be 5 halves and 1 third. By setting both of those equal to 0, uh, adding the 1 or 5 and dividing by the number in front of the x, that would be your final answer. So this is what you would put for that because the question says you send that to find the other zeros. So you don't have to actually include the original one with your answer. You can just simply put the two answers that you find by setting equal to zero. The common mistake I usually see with this problem is students will come down to here and just write that. And they'll just put 6x squared minus 17x plus 5. Well, that's not a zero. That's uh, a polynomial. So instead, we have to solve that one and set it equal to zero. Make sure you do that last step and get to the last two answers here.